Hello, welcome. Uh, we are going to take a look on this three dimensional model to the left um, spermatic vein, and this will hopefully explain why the varicose seal happens mainly on the left side. So, you can see this is a model of a human being. I uh, removed some of the layers because it's so complex so we can see a little bit this vein i'm going to help you here um, so this vein carries the blood that comes from the testicle and take it back to the circulation and we can see here on this model uh, this is the vein that will go all the way climb all the way to the renal vein this is the kidney so that partially explains why uh, these varicose heal happens mainly on the left side is because of, if you see here the right angle of attachment of the left gonadal vein or left spermatic vein to the renal vein. So this is one of the reasons. It makes uh, puts a lot more stress on the vein. Um, it's a little bit harder for blood to circulate so there's a uh, more risk and more chance of the varicose heal happening on the left side of the body. So okay so this is one of the reasons. The other reason is simply because uh, the left gonadal vein attachment happens at an 8 to 10 centimeter higher than the right gonadal vein. The right will go straight into this major highway of the body called the inferior vena cava. So it's a big vein, but it happens a little bit lower than the, the left side. So you can add 8 to 10 centimeter of more pressure. One other cause is one of the other causes of um, left-sided varicose is called the nutcracker syndrome. The nutcracker syndrome happens when there's uh, a big artery that goes to the bowel, may compress the uh, left renal vein. So the buildup of pressure in that left renal vein will of course affect the spermatic vein. So this is more like an indirect mechanism of uh, left-sided varicose. So here we're going to see a real case of varicose embolization performed by an interventional radiologist. The procedure starts as usual with the infiltration of local anesthesia. So this is uh, one of the main advantages of this procedure is that it can be done under local anesthetic only. No need for general anesthesia, no need for putting a tube in the patient's throat, no need for all the risks, cerebral risks, and accident that may happen during general anesthesia. The recovery is also faster. Once gaining access to the vein, the physician will introduce a small wire that is visualized on the right-hand screen. This is the beauty of interventional radiology as it allows the physicians that are specially trained in interventional procedures to see inside the human body without the need of dissecting it, without the need of opening it. And this allows the patient to recover faster and have less risks. Physician places what we call a vascular sheet that is flushed. After that, it will introduce a guiding catheter that has a special shape. It's called a gonadal shape. This allows the physician to quickly maneuver the catheter because he can see what's happening inside thanks to the x-rays. The shape of this catheter quickly finds the renal vein here and immediately gets into the spermatic vein that we discussed earlier that originates from the left renal vein. After that, confirmation of the position is made with, a, with contrast injection obtaining a venography. We can clearly see a big prominent spermatic vein which is the cause of the varicocele. We see contrast pacifying the left renal vein. And in addition to that, in one of the main advantage of venography over surgery is that you can visualize all the collateral veins. These collateral veins 
when not treated can be the source of recurrence. So this is a venography. You see a snapshot of what's happening inside the main renal vein as well as the collateral and small branches, a big prominent spermatic vein going all the way down to the testicle and is responsible for all these problem including the left varicose here. So now the decision would be to advance the catheter, get a little bit in a more selective position in preparation for the embolization procedure. And in this case, we'll see a technique called the sandwich technique, which involves the use of both coil and sclerotherapy for maximal beneficial effect, and also for the prevention of the recurrence. Just a reminder, recurrence are more seen after surgery than after embolization. And this is due to the fact that the radiologist can visualize and preemptively treat those veins that may be left behind and developed later after a surgical ligation, causing the patient to experience again all the problems. On scatter, advanced into a more distal position. The physician magnifies the image. We can make the image look much bigger. Again, we do a selective venography here, and you can see a big prominent main vein, and on the side of this, uh, tiny little branches, small collateral branches, when left untreated, can give recurrence of symptoms. However, they cannot escape the eye of the radiologist. As you notice, at any time, the testicle of the patient are exposed to the x-ray beam, thanks to the collimation and the centering of the image. In addition, patients who are really concerned about x-rays, we can place interposing material that protects the gonads during the procedures. But the main thing is not to expose them directly to the x-ray beam, as the physician is doing here. There's no need to image them. So now the physician will prepare the coils to be placed and delivered through the small, tiny catheter. As you can see, this is a non-edited case, a live case. Procedure is fairly quick and it does not really take long to get rid of this problem of varicocele. So this is the first coil that will be advanced. Um, as you notice here, the physician did not use any guiding or guide wire, only done with a glide catheter that is advanced. This type of catheter is not uh, traumatic to the vein, can be directed uh, and torqued in different directions. So once the catheter is in a good position, the physician will decide what is the most appropriate location for coil delivery. So this is just one type of coils called the pushable coils. They are pushed by a, a guide wire. And uh, once it reaches position, it's gonna start forming. Basically a coil is the type of material that induces a thrombosis, meaning blood coagulation inside the vein, as well as uh, some inflammation. Ultimately, this will lead to creation of a thrombus and a local inflammatory reaction that will block and close the blood vessel. Can these uh, coils migrate back with the circulation and kill the patient? I uh, don't think so in the case of varicocele. There's no case, to my knowledge, published in the medical literature. In theory, any foreign body may migrate, but I don't think it will here, given the fact of this 90 degree angle with the renal vein. And the coils are anchored fairly deeply within the pelvis, as you see here. After that, it will be a sclerotherapy that will induce more closure of the vein and everything 
maintains the skull in place. Uh, again, let's not forget that there's no blood flow after this. So if there's no blood flow, there should be no migration. It's impossible. So this coil is placed a little bit distally above the inguinal uh, ligament. The purpose of this coil is to protect the pampiniform plexus from any sclerotherapy. As the physician would move back now the catheter a little bit higher and he will uh, probably do a venography at this point to check the result of the embolization and also detect any additional vein that could be missed and needs to be treated. So this is the venography. You can see the main prominent vein has coil in it, but there's a tiny branches on the side. Again, this is what the surgeon miss. You can see medially to it, more uh, inferiorly, there's like a big prominent vein that needs to be treated. If it's not treated, then the patient may experience again, a recurrence of treatment or a failure of surgery. So if the surgeon ligates only the main vein, which is already great, uh, usually there's a high risk with surgery of missing the collateral veins because simply they cannot see them. They are uh, seen here with the venography. So the physician will re-advance the catheter to get a, trying to get inside that vein. Here he gets into it. So at this point he will add more coils so this to prevent again any problems in the future so again this is what we call the sandwich technique so the coils are placed distally above the coils we can place sclerosing agent form sclerotherapy uh, liquid sclerotherapy there are even now uh, some physician in the past they used uh, boiling contrast to treat that vein. So essentially the goal is to prevent any uh, of this material to leak down to the testicle. In addition, a simple compression, manual compression of the vein at the inguinal canal or the inguinal ligament uh, done by another assistant to the operator uh, help makes this procedure very safe. So there's absolutely zero chance of the form of the sclerosing agent to get into the pampiniform plexus or even damage the testicle as it has been rumored and I heard some patients that have been told that. So again, uh, interventional radiologists are, and skilled physicians, they know what they're doing. They do everything in a very, very precise because everything is um, under constant visualization. Again, very important to have this procedure done by a trained interventional radiologist because they, they have gone through specific training and uh, avoid other physicians that were not trained in the, this particular field uh, to try to do it. An interventional radiologist will never go do surgery, for example, because Surgery is a respectable field that needs years and years of training. It's the same thing for interventional radiology. So now time to, uh, once these veins have been isolated, there's a, a small lateral vein that you see here. Uh, extremely difficult to catheterize a place of coil given the size. And again, a small, tiny, little medial vein. Again, too small to uh, catheterize and place coil. So what's the solution here. The solution is simply to add foam sclerotherapy on top of the coils. Foam will quickly find all these little veins that will take care of them quickly and mean immediately. As soon as the foam touches the vein, it's a sclerosing agent, it will destroy them. So that's the advantage of foam sclerotherapy. The other advantage is it does not leave anything behind. There's no implant. In this particular technique, it's called a sandwich. Both uh, are used for a maximal effect. So you see how many collaterals veins. The main channel is the big one in the middle. There are two veins on the side, one small, tiny little vein, medial. So this is what uh, can be a source of problem if uh, normal classical surgery is done. Again, here with IR, with radiology, 
this should not be an issue. Again, I emphasize that form scleral therapy should not be done only if the physician has been trained in on the vascular procedures, knows the risks, knows how to manipulate the form. Again, a form treated or done by someone who is not trained may induce accident, uh, like the uh, scler sclerotherapy agent migrating into other vessels because the way they they do it, they may, may induce some damage. There are three cases, to my knowledge, reported in the literature of accident that happened with foam sclerotherapy. So the foam once is formed uh, using a three-way stopcock and two syringes, it's going to be ready to deliver. Before delivery, the physician will inject some contrast and he's going to use the uh, contrast displacement technique to inject only the right amount of uh, foam and to prevent non-target embolization, which happens when the foam is forcibly inject and then goes into uh, other veins because everything is a network. These veins all connect and they may connect to bowel, to colon, and even in some case to the spine cord itself. So it's, the foam is, is uh, very highly efficient, but it's tricky. Again, so once the foam is done, to maintain it in place, the physician place another coil on top to allow it to sit there and do its job. And this is what we call the sandwich technique, in which uh, two embolic materials are used. Coil is placed on top. In between, you have foam. The foam, imagine, is like diffusing in all these tiny little collaterals that we saw. Problem solved in less than an hour. Quickly through a small pinhole in the vein. Patient is awake. He's listening to his favorite music. There's no need to put him under general anesthesia or incision. Recovery is within a few days to a maximum a week. Um, after this procedure, patients are advised to refrain from sexual activity for approximately one week. Uh, they're given some pain medication as needed. Most patients regain their work and normal life within a few days. Catheter is retracted. Physician will add one more coil. to block the remaining vein. And uh, once the cord is placed, procedure is about to be completed successfully with no major risks for the patients or major side effects. Now time to do an injection of contrast to assess the patency of the spermatic organoidal vein. Patient, uh, it's to be noted that all these uh, injections are done under the Valsalva maneuver. We ask patient to kind of force, take a deep breath and hold it with the, while pushing. It's called a Valsalva to prevent any migration. So to see the vein has been uh, occluded, there's no more reflux in the testicle, we don't see any other collaterals. Um, coil packed and deeply anchored, they're not moving. One last coil is placed. Patient advanced, the physician advanced the coil in the remaining because this vein is uh, fairly large so and also to allow for the sclerotherapy or the foam to stay and do its effect on the vein. Another coil again is advanced. These are pushable coil pushed with a guide wire and a packing of the coil is then obtained 
achieving a successful venous embolization and eventually with no problem and then at the end a venography will be performed to assess the results now ready for the last image patient is centered gonna be uh, asking him to do a a salva maneuver to keep the uh, blood in position patient is asked to hold his breath while the physician will perform the final imaging and inject the contrast in the spermatic vein here's the contrast getting injected you can see that the there's no more pacification of the distal spermatic vein it has been completely occluded there's no collaterals left behind and this is how a embolization procedure with the sandwich technique is performed successfully thank you